Okay, hello everybody. New topic, open sample format. Why do I want to start with that topic? I'm a long time user of Native Instruments Contact and when Contact 6 came out, they first removed the database features, which is now in there again, but they also removed a lot of different formats where you can import. And so I was starting to think, what is the long time usability of such tools? Can I still access my own samples or not if they are in proprietary formats? So I started to look into what are alternatives, what are open sample formats, where I can also access my samples in the next 10 or 20 years. What is necessary to have this accessible? Um, yeah, there should be an open specification available and there should be no licensing fee necessary for using this specification. This holds true for some formats out there. The very old one is simple WAV formats, so WAV files and sound font too. As I've said, also some tools from companies which are not free but the format is pretty simple or also available as a documentation like Bitwig multi samples for the Bitwig sampler or the new decent sampler which I will go into detail in, in a second so let's start with these formats and have a look what they can and what is the background so first one, good old wave format was developed by IBM and Microsoft back in 1991 and it's based on the RIF format. So the RIF format was the, the base format which contains of different parts and these parts are called chunks and there are different specifications how you can use these chunks and fill these chunks and one of them is the wave format and you find these two specifications. First one is multimedia programming interface and data specifications which talks about RIF and some implementations of RIF and what what you can do with it and then a new multimedia data types and data techniques in version 3 is another format specification which talks specifically about wave and also for extensions what many people don't know about and also i was not aware of that you can build full-blown instruments so key ranges splits and layers and all these things only with wave files but the sad news about that is there are it's very rarely used and i'm not aware of any tools which support such things so so even the, some wave files you find which have uh, layer information, they contain totally nonsense information in the sample chunk data, for example, wrong base notes and things like that. Yeah, so not that really usable, but it could be used, but sadly the tools are not really available for that. So Sound Phone 2, another prehistoric format from back in the 90s, uh, back then mostly driven by Emu Systems and Creative Labs. Uh, Emu Systems was bought by Creative Labs after some time also in the 90s. And the current version is 2.04, the Sound Phone technical specification, also easily to find and downloadable on the net. I forgot that also here the, those two specifications are publicly available on the net and just enter the name and you will find it pretty easily. Yeah. Yeah, back to Soundphone 2. So it was first with the good old Sound Blaster sound cards back then for the PCs. Uh, and the main idea was to have basic set of sounds based on samples. And it's also based on the riff format, so like Wave. And the file extension is SF2. So what it adds to the riff format are specific chunks, again, for instruments and presets and samples. Uh, more for that in a second. The main thing about it is it's only one file, which makes it easy to handle, but not so easy to deal with if you don't have the tools to manage it so uh, the samples and the metadata description for the for your instruments are in one file so you definitely need tools for editing and uh, using that as i said it contains presets instrument and samples so an instrument consists of several samples which can be layered velocity layered can be split into parts and then these instruments can be combined into presets which is very powerful Powerful, so you can have several ones but in practicality the handling is not so easy of such a file so I would prefer to keep this separate into one instrument file but that's also something you can do with that format as well and it contains not only those basic layering and split support parameters but also additional subtractive synthesis like envelopes filters effects modulation also the problem with that is that it depends then on the tool which interprets the information how it sounds so it's not guaranteed that all these samples sound then the same depending on the settings and your engine which deals with those parameters and it's also a limitation it's only designed to store 16 or 24 bit samples 
Here you might have run into SF3 sound fonts, which is not really a standard or anything. It's an extension by MuseScore, which just stores the samples in OCK Warbase format. So a compressed format, which makes the files smaller, but not really a big change to the format itself. Yeah, moving on to SF set, also a long time developed by Rene Cavalos from RGC Audio, which he had a, a playback engine for his former SF set plus was a tool called. RGC Audio, his company was acquired by Cakeboard in 2005. And this format is a plain text file for metadata, which makes it very easy to editing. You only need a text editor and the samples are separate from these files. So you have your WAV file, for example, or several WAV files for your multi-sample. And this metadata file describes how they should be used together. For example, you can keep then your samples in a subfolder for organization. This makes it very easy to have this accessible also so after some time, but you yeah, nevertheless need to have the engine to run that. Very, very good documentation of all the different attributes can be found at this URL as of setformat.com. It's also an active development, so you can have on GitHub on the as of set repo, you can also make suggestions for new opcodes. Opcodes is the, the name they use for the parameters, which is supported. Pretty similar to sound font. It has a lot of parameters for subtractive synthesis, so also filters, envelope, modulation, so very powerful but not many of the engines support all of them are the same issue with sound font is how these parameters are then interpreted and how it sounds then with the tool. Bitwig multi-samples is not really uh, an open format but the structure is so easy it uh, can be understood if you just by looking at it so it, it's basically the description file and sample file is the same with like as of set you have a separate description file and you have several sample files and the description file file is even in XML format, which is pretty easy to read. And the only thing you need to find out about it is that it's actually a zip file. So the file ending with dot multisample is a zip file. You can open it with any zip tool, 7zip for example. And in there you will find this XML file and the separate sample files are also very good for archiving. And the features are basic. You have key ranges and velocity layers, and that's Basically, it's also loop information, basic information you need to have a multi-sample, but no further synthesis parameters like filters or anything. Bitwig contains also another format for then for the presets for his sampler, but this is then a binary format and there is no documentation available for that. Okay, now the new kit on the block is Decent Sampler plugin and the developer of that plugin also made his format public. So it's also very well documented on this URL. You find the specification for his format. It's also an XML. It's called the DS preset then and the addition in contrast now to, to Bitwig or SFZ is that it can also have some UI uh, elements like faders or knobs and also add pictures to that and these are then also located in the subfolders together with your samples. Possibilities are also a bit limited so you have similar like between key ranges, velocity layers but you have also I think one envelope it's only and some effect description. Yeah, moving on to tools, uh, what, what are available? So SoundFone 2 is definitely the oldest kit on the block and there's tons of tools available, which all uh, they are sometimes feel a bit historic as well. So R-Wave is a very old conversion tool and also editing tool. R-Wave Studio is still there, still developed and still new versions and something definitely worth to take a look at if you need, especially to deal with different formats. Yeah, Sample Robot, I did several tutorials also about Sample Robot, so you can check out there. So a tool to sample your uh, hardware synths or create totally new sound samples or also for sampling your VST plugin. So very powerful tool and check out my tutorial videos about that. And it can also write sound font too as an export format. Then an editor is Vienna, which is also actively developed and not to be confused with the original Vienna with double M, which was also a similar editor by Creative. Uh, both look a little bit very old school and not something I would really like to use. Swami is also an editor and as well a player, which uses Fluidsynth as the player. 
And the uh, newer one, which looks much nicer, I think, is Polyphone. Check that out as well, which is also an editor. Then there are lots of sampler players. Um, so Bitwig Studio sampler can also read sound from two. Fluidsyn, fully freely available plugin, open source plugin. So you can also see uh, the source code that also many projects based on Fluidsyn. So pretty established tool, which can read and play sound fonts. Then there is an if you're on iOS, if you're an iPad user, you can use this Bismarck plugin, which uh, supports reading and playing sound fonts. And yeah, actually many workstations, hardware workstations, support the sound font too as well. For example, a broad range of Cork workstations like the new Nautilus or the Kronos or also the older M3, which I own, really uh, simply can, can load these and you can use it on your workstation as well. And also the latest Roland Phantom editions, uh, they provide an external converter, which can convert sound from two files to SFZ, which is a native format of the Phantom. So it's also easily to bring uh, good old sound from the sounds into your Roland Phantom. Okay, uh, moving on to SFZ, which is a bit newer, so not so many tools available, but also our wave, Sample Robot, Polyphone, which I already mentioned before, support these formats. And for both our lists on SFZ format side, so you can check out much more tools which are available and also players which are available. Also the Bitwig Studio Sampler can read the format. Linux Sampler, which you might have heard of, also speaks uh, SFZ. For Sando is a plugin which is available for quite some time. Yeah, and finally, SFITS is a new kit on the block which is open source and also the source code is available openly. Uh, is a plugin available for Linux, also the ARM version on Linux, which is also interesting if you are into Raspberry Pi and also for Mac OS and Windows. Finally, uh, okay, uh, as you might know, I'm a big Bitwig fan, so Bitwig Sampler can read his own format. And I also wrote a tool, multi sample generator, which we also find some tutorials tutorials here on my channel, which can import several waveforms and automatically create multi-sample based on uh, the naming uh, of those files. And also Decent Sampler, I, I mentioned already, is a freely available plugin for their format and it's also uh, available on a broad amount of uh, operating systems. What is now the conclusion? <laughs> I don't know, to be honest. All these formats have their pros and cons. I'm leaning a bit towards SFZ, but also yeah, the Bitwig multi sample is interesting. So the basic stuff is working on all formats, so it's very easy to store your multi layer sounds or velocity splits and uh, key range splits. I easily manage in all of these formats, and I think you can also access them in several years. If you are into parameters, it's getting difficult and it's highly depending on those tools. As I said, I already have this multi sample generator tool which only runs in, in Bitwig, and I'm working on a new, much more powerful converter tool which can convert between these formats I presented here and that was also the idea before releasing this tool to give an understanding about the possibilities of these different formats and yeah let's see what the future brings and yeah make some funky music